If you ever wondered how it's possible to actually batch create your content and have months of your content done in a single day, today's video is gonna be one of the most crucial videos that you'll ever watch because I am gonna literally pull back the curtains to show you exactly how I do it and how you can actually get your sanity back. If you're somebody that's constantly thinking about, okay, you know what, I'm gonna create videos today, but then you don't really have a system, you don't have a process, you don't know what to talk about, you might not have a script, then today's video, I'm going to walk you through how do you actually put it into a system so that all you need to do is dedicate at least one day a month and have at least one month worth of content planned out, scheduled, scripted out, shot so that you can get your life back as well as your sanity back. It's all going to be revealed in today's video. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ping Jun here, helping you monetize your knowledge as well as your content and your life experience a whole lot better. And today, I'm gonna be going behind the scenes to show you exactly how you can do that by walking you through the process to making it happen. When it comes to process and softwares, there are a lot of different softwares out there that you could be utilizing. And the one that I use is Trello. Now, there's a lot of productivity and activity management softwares. There's Asana, there's Monday, and many other similar softwares. You could you do this manually on a spreadsheet, find one that works for you. But I wanna share with you today how you can put it into a process. So step number one is really just creating a board. So I'm, I'm literally gonna create this board together with you from scratch. And inside the board, there are many lists. So right now, the first, thing we need to do in order to help you map out and batch create videos, it is all about how you put it into a process first. Now, the first step, I'm going to put all the steps in here and I'm going to fast forward this video. So... Okay, so here it is. We are on a brand new board called the YouTube Workflow. And from left to right, I'd like you to think about a standard manufacturing line where right now, rather than manufacturing cars, we are literally manufacturing a YouTube video from its idea all the way to completion. But it all begins by having some sort of idea dump. This is where I'm also going to be sharing with you a process of all of different steps involved in the idea stage all the way to research to optimization to promoting it all the way to completing it okay so let's begin okay so what we have just done is you can see that i have created a workflow where on each different stage from researching to scripting and filming it to editing it and the graphics and optimizing it. it's all gonna be here but first let me explain to you before i reveal to the entire process how it works first right so it all begins with just dumping your ideas all in here so whatever idea that you might have the way you do that is from this step over here so how do you create ideas this would be for example from youtube searches and from the youtube search so here's how it works Okay, so from this card here, I'm gonna do a quick YouTube search and see what YouTube gives me if I were to do this specific search. So let's say I do that step and by doing that search, so let's say if it's TikTok ads. So I'm gonna type in TikTok ads, okay? So let's say I'm thinking about doing a video on TikTok ads. I am literally seeing the results and seeing how they are titled and created. I am noticing the thumbnail, the choice of thumbnail that's being utilized to give me ideas. So let's say I'm getting an idea on, okay, YouTube ads tutorial and practice. Okay, let's just do a quick exercise together. So TikTok advertising examples. Okay, this is just a brain dump of different ideas that I could be utilizing based on ads that is known to convert. This brain dump stage, sometimes it could also be questions that I get from you guys from YouTube. If somebody asks me a question, this goes to my idea dump category. Sometimes it could be a specific video that I see. And if I feel that, hey, that's a pretty good talking point, this is something that's trending, that's going viral right now, that goes to my idea dump 
YouTube workflow. Inside Trello, it has got this really cool feature and there is this thing that says email to board settings. Now, if I were to click on this email to board settings, notice that Trello gives me this link. I can actually copy this email address that is unique to me and add it in my address book in Gmail. So I could call this my YouTube workflow board. Every time I see something that's interesting, if I were to email myself this link, it goes straight away to this exact board to my ideas dump. So this is how you load up your idea dump board. So now this helps you populate your idea dump board. And this is where you would have like a whole bunch of idea dump videos. Okay, so what I've just done is I have actually loaded up some samples to show you how that might look like in my board. Things that I could be doing or videos that I could be shooting that perhaps I haven't shot it yet. So for example, um, this video idea that I had where I would show you how I did a campaign where I bought YouTube subscribers running YouTube ads. You'll notice that like for this idea dump card, it has a screenshot of how that campaign looked like where I ran this YouTube ad to different countries to show you how much it costs to buy a YouTube subscriber. Okay, so this is more of a social experiment. So now it's still in its idea stage, right? So this is how you just load up. So now you can kind of like pick and decide which one to go forward with. So step one is done, right? I've got the idea dump category of different topics that I could be talking about as an example, all loaded up. And uh, you'll notice that this is kind of like color coded as well. It's like pink in color. That's just how I utilize it to kind of determine that the activity that it is to give me like a bird's eye view of what the thing is. You need to have a process. That's what's going to give you your freedom and your sanity back. Then the next thing is keyword research. Right, so we talked about how you've done the search, right? You've, you've, you're getting ideas, you're dumping in, in your idea dumps board, whether it's from email, whether it is something you stumble upon, you email yourself. Then the next thing that you need to do is you need to come up with a solid title idea. So how I like to move this forward. So let's say I feel like, you know what? It's time to talk about TikTok ads. So now I'm gonna move this from just an idea and I'm gonna do keyword research around this keyword. Okay, so from this main keyword, TikTok ads, can I actually go deeper into TikTok ads? Now, one way to do better keyword research is to allow Google to tell you what people are actually searching for. So how do you do that? You do that by going to Google and typing in TikTok ads. And what I would do is I want to let the auto complete tell me. So, you know, TikTok ads account, API, API annoying agency B TikTok ads business best practice so remember the last thing you want to do is to create a YouTube video that nobody is searching for a title that nobody's interested in this get this allows you to begin with the end in mind to start understanding oh okay so people want to know what are TikTok ads or best practice so perhaps if this is what I want to talk about this could be perhaps the dimensions optimizing it how to start with the right hook the billing benchmark so all I'm doing is I'm getting ideas. Case studies of TikTok ads doing well. Conversion rates, what to expect. TikTok ads with drop shipping. TikTok ads examples. TikTok ads in e-commerce. So all I'm doing is A, B, C, D, E, F, G to give me ideas. So let's say I decide to go with TikTok ads best practice. So TikTok ads itself is broad, but let's say now it's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go ahead with TikTok ads and I'm gonna call this TikTok ads best practice. So imagine right now I'm pulling a few to the keyword research stage. So this one's moving forward. Then if you have decided to move this forward and see to its completion, let's just utilize one sample. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is push it forward, right? Then the next thing that needs to happen is a title and tag. Now, what is a title and tag? A title and tag basically means that I believe that every great title has got to have its keyword rich title, which is the keyword that people are searching for. And at the same time, something that is a good hook, a good pattern interrupt, something gets people's attention and makes them want to click. So that if it gets recommended as a YouTube video, if people are searching for it, for example, TikTok ads as a 
title isn't catchy enough. So, for example, if let's say I've done an ad and I've spent, let's say, $7,000 on that ad, then I could say the $7,000, you know, case study. Now, this makes it different. This makes a person go, oh, wait a second. I want to see what happened when this person spent $7,000 on TikTok ads. Or like, it could be TikTok ads best practice, five rules to maximize conversions or five mistakes most marketers make. This portion here may not necessarily have search value, may not necessarily help with the algorithm, but what it does help is it makes a person want to click or watch the recommended video because now it's a little bit more interesting rather than just TikTok ads. So now it's got a mixture of these two things. It's the hook plus keyword rich. You need to have these two elements. So, so right now, let's just do a few different examples. So right now, hey, take a look at this. How I batch content for YouTube, which is literally this video right now, right? So this video over here, by the way, I don't really have a script. So it's like, we are over here right now. So back to this example, right? I've created a good title together with the hook. So let's say I want to be able to move this forward and I want to create a script. So if you are a solopreneur, obviously you'll be doing this yourself from start to completion. And if you have a freelancer, if you're outsourcing this, if you're somebody on your team to help you with this, we'll come to that in a second. But so this is where you might have, want to have a script. So let's say I decide to come up with a script and some different talking points. So let's say number one is, you know, best practice is you got to have it in the right dimensions, okay? Number two, perhaps I want to say you want to utilize a sound that is viral or rather a music that's viral, whatever. Okay, so I'm, I'm listing down the, the five talking points. Now, depending on how well-versed you are, you might need a really in-depth script. I don't use scripts at all. I might have some talking points to help me with it. When I was starting out, chances are you might need to type it all out, even print it out. Um, do what works for you based on your current level. So I'm gonna have a script out, talking points one, two, three, four, five. Then when it comes to shooting, okay, so coming back to this master template, okay, notice what we've done. We've gotten ideas from other people. We've taken a look at other people's thumbnails, okay? So now, as I am going and seeing what YouTube is telling me, I am seeing all these thumbnails that is working well. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting ideas, right? Oh, okay, so they might utilize this thumbnail over here, and then it could be the case that it's holding up a, a mobile phone. So this gives me ideas on what I could be doing with my thumbnail. Optional, you could utilize third-party softwares like TubeBuddy or vidIQ to get ideas as well. So this is when you'll go to the scripting. So scripting, and I will leave the how to script a video in another video. I'll leave this in the recommended video. Uh, be sure to watch that video after this one. But basically, this is where you want to have the hook, the promise, what's in it for me, content, call to action, other related videos so that they binge watch your channel. But that's basically the script, okay? So you can just go through this, or if you want the in-depth version of it, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I've got a lot of videos just like this one. But also make sure that you're watching my other related videos. So let's I've done the script and now it's time to film. So back to this master template. Filming, the checklist is, <laughs> this is funny, but well, not that funny. But I have actually done videos in the past where after shooting the entire video, I realized that my mic was actually on mute. So it sounds dumb in a way it is. Okay, just make sure your mic is actually turned on. It's not muted. Uh, there's enough credit cards, uh, camera card space, not credit card space. Um, your phone, if you're recording your phone, make sure that it's on airplane mode or do not disturb so that you don't get cut off halfway while shooting that video. And finally, while you are shooting that video, uh, you might want to take a thumbnail photo or you want to take a photo for the thumbnail. So sometimes it could be as simple as just doing a, a really quick pose. Right after you shoot that video, do that pose that is required for that video. So some it could be in front of a green screen with a backdrop, right? So let's say if it's a TikTok ad, it would be like, something like that, right? So based on the different ideas, the different thumbnails, it could be this, whatever, right? So this is when this thing, this pose, this post becomes that thumbnail and the reason why you always want to have a thumbnail well for obvious reasons is because the recommended or default thumbnail from youtube isn't going to be really attractive it's not going to give you that high click-through rate which is what uh, the algorithm looks at and many times if you just go with the default you know your eyes will be half closed or something so just make sure that when you finish the video you take a thumbnail okay so that's where i'm giving you the checklist as well take the thumbnail photo okay once you have taken that thumbnail you're done with 
with filming, this is where you move on to the next stage, which is the editing. So imagine right now you've shot the video and you are ready for edits. So here's the thing, right? Now, obviously, I'm not an editor. I don't know if you're an editor. I don't know what level you're at in your YouTube journey just yet. I don't know if you're trying to do all of it yourself. I don't know if you're outsourcing it to somebody online. I don't know if you're an in-house team. But this is when, for those of you that might want to outsource or eventually outsource and give it to somebody else, you want to be able to have a member tagged into this card. So for example, my team members, um, this is where I would want to tag somebody from my team who would be uh, in charge of this task. Now, even, even then, I, I don't do that anymore. My operations manager would do that. So again, de depending on what level you're at. So let's say I am tagging somebody from my team. So this means that this person right now is in charge of editing this video. This is where you want to have, again, a process. Okay, with all of our videos, including this one, by the way, it could be the case that there was a lot of fluff. So what is fluff? Fluff could be like, just for, like this video, there were times when I'm searching for a specific thing. The fluff would be like right at the start of the video when I was creating all these lists, remember? right? It would be really boring if you literally just waited for me while I created these lists one by one. So that to me is fluff. We either cut it out or speed things up. Editing. Is there a branded intro? And, and by the way, so feel free to pause this video if you want to, you know, just copy and duplicate all of the different steps. Um, a branded intro, just like the start of this, this video and all of my videos, there's this quick five seconds, sometimes 10 seconds, quick branded intro that gets a person that might be new to the channel to get a basic understanding of what it is that I do. Um, you want to think about if you want to have subtitles, if you have a call to action. So like all my videos, sometimes in the middle, sometimes at the end, I would have a call to action that says something along the lines of, by the way, if you enjoyed a video like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you're notified whenever we come up with a video similar to this one or other related videos. And then this thing appears. So can I have my team just magically have this subscribe call to action button appear? So, so notice what just happened, right? Even though it's obvious, people might not realize that that's what they could be doing. So in all of your videos, you want to have like a mild call to action in the middle at the end, somewhere in your video to get people subscribed. By the way, so hopefully you can, you should be subscribing right now if you enjoy, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to smash the subscribe button, okay? Next one is, are there B-rolls that's needed? So for example, like this video, because it's very tutorial based and tactical, chances are there's no B-rolls. And finally, as you are editing the video, just like this video, you'll notice at the end, you want to have an end screen for other recommended videos. Your videos. Why? Because you want to make sure that a person stays on your channel and binge watch your videos. Like notice what I did earlier. I actually seeded that in. Remember me saying, I said, by the way, if you want to be able to understand how to create a script for your YouTube videos, be sure to watch my other recommended video, right? So make sure that you have an end screen for your other recommended videos. And that is where your editor or you should be doing on this stage. Now, also on this stage, one of the things that you probably want to have is to attach a due date associated to this task. Now, this is important. Why? Because if you don't do that, then that person that is in charge of this task wouldn't know the urgency, wouldn't know what is expected of this person. So, so let's say I'm gonna put it in a week from now. So now I'm gonna save this. So it's very clear that this person that is assigned to this task, this video needs to get this done by November 18th. Now, when this person is done, again, remember this is just manufacturing and batch creating your videos, okay? And moving this to the next step, before I talk about the social media graphics and optimizing and promoting it, one very crucial thing to mention, right? Now, now what is the, the promise of this video? You see this? Literally, this is where I'm, we're at right now. I need to film a video that promises how I batch content for YouTube and how you can create one month's worth of content in a day, okay? So how do you actually do that? Okay, well, you'll notice that there seems to be a lot of steps. And the reason why there's a lot of steps right now is because you, you're trying to get this system set up. Like for me, what am I doing right now? Even like for today, I am literally spending today batch creating all of my YouTube videos, utilizing this same process that you're seeing. So to batch content for whether it's one month, three months, but what I do right now is I would try to spend one day in a week to batch create content for the month. So in order to determine what that day would look like, you first need to begin with the end in mind by deciding how many videos do you want to be publishing 
a month. Are you somebody that wants to do once a week, twice a week? So for me, I know that based on my current strategy right now, I am releasing three videos a week, which means in a month, I need to have 12 videos. So the question is, how can I shoot 12 videos? And what would this comprise of? So if you follow this channel closely, you'll notice that two videos in a week they are tutorial based just like this one right now where i'm teaching something and one video would be repurposed from something repurposed it could be a, a coaching call that i did it could be some sort of behind the scenes it could be a vlog it could be a speech that i did somewhere it could be a keynote but whatever it is my team will look for something that i did in the past repurpose it and that becomes one of the videos as well so in other words what i really need to do is i need to shoot two tutorial based videos and publish it per week which means two times four would be eight tutorial videos so it depends on your strategy how often you want to publish and create and then you reverse engineer now i know that if i really spent my entire day i can shoot eight videos in a day and the reason for that is because i have some sort of you know practice now i don't really rely on any type of scripting so it really just depends on how long the scripting process takes because the other parts can be outsourced and can get freelancers to help you with it so back to this initial example D decide are you like once a week twice a week but at the very minimum start okay build up this process because systems will set you free right now i know looking at this thing whether you want to do it on monday or asana or trello it sounds like a pain and the truth is setting it up is probably a pain but i promise you if you just followed along on this video and completed this video and did it together with me pause this video if you choose to it's going to be the best well spent 20 minutes that'll help you optimize your process and your workflow when it comes to publishing on social media platforms specifically youtube okay back to this example okay back to this workflow so right now it's ready for editing and let's say the person that is editing this video has done the task so this person pushes the step to this next thing right understand for example that we're just utilizing this one example right now in, in reality is that there are all these things going on right there could be different videos at different stages so it could be the case that today there are five videos on this stage so i could literally walk in front of my camera and i'm taking a look at all of the videos that it's on this stage right now which is to film so i'm starting off my day clear that today these are the videos that I need to film. So now it, this gives you a bird's eye view exactly where you are based on that idea. So your idea dump could be like this huge list of stuff. And why? It is because every single time you are seeing something on YouTube, on Facebook, if you receive an email on something, if you see something that's viral trending, you just keep sending it to your idea dump board. So it all comes here. And now there's a very, very clear cut strategy on taking that idea and manufacturing that idea, which happens to be a video to become a reality. So now if we are here in order to maximize the reach of your video, you want to make sure that it's optimized for different social social media platforms, not just YouTube. Here's what I mean. So taking a look at the master template again, again, follow the steps. This is where you, on this step, depending on what platforms you wanna focus on, you wanna make sure that there's somebody that creates this YouTube thumbnail. This is the most important one. Facebook and Instagram, optional. But you must have somebody that understands what makes a good YouTube thumbnail, what makes it pop, the fonts, the color scheme. And that is what that person is doing on this step over here. This person is creating the social media graphics that's optimized for YouTube, which is the thumbnail. It could be the case for Instagram stories. Okay, it could be the case for Facebook. So now if it's the same person, great. This person will move this card over here. If it's a different person, then this person will just assign the next person in here, remove himself from this. And then after that, now we all know that this next person person is in charge of this task. So after that, if this person has done the graphics, we want to ask, ask ourselves, is it optimized for YouTube once we schedule it up? Okay, so how do we optimize it? Again, this is all about helping you put a process in place. So we optimize, so let's say the Facebook images, the Instagram images done. So this is the typical 
you know, and again, I've got full-fledged videos on this, so I'm not going to go deep in this. Be sure to watch the other related videos. Um, but this is where we want to make sure there's a title, there's a description box, if there's a subscribe link, if there's other cards, if there's end screen, have we changed the thumbnail or tags included? Is this part of a playlist? Now, why is this important? Because if it's a part of a playlist, this encourages people to stay in your channel and binge watch your other videos. So this is how we optimize it. Okay. So now this person, guess what, who's assigned these steps, these checklists would also be available to that person. So it's very clear that the person that is in charge of this specific task has got to be doing these steps. Does that make sense? So now everybody is very clear on the role. So whether you are a solopreneur, it helps you understand all of the different steps. If you have a freelancer helping you with this task, this person is very clear on what is expected of this person. This is what's going to enable you to have a life and to be hands off and to work on the direction of the business on the strategic side of things and not on the tactical side of things. So let's say this person has done it. Finally, this person is going to move it to the last part, which is promoting it. So promotion, what would that look like? This is when a person is going to ask, have we sent it out to our email list? Have we embedded it on our website? Have we shared this on Facebook? Are we going to do a Facebook live on this? Can we add a teaser version, a 59 second version, a 15 second Instagram story that says, hey everybody, I just dropped this new video on YouTube. Be sure to swipe up or my link is, the link is in my bio if you want to watch this new video that just dropped. Um, can I add this on Pinterest? After I publish it to spur engagements and to encourage future engagements, have you pinned the comment, one or two comments or at least one comment um, that usually either gets people to binge watch other related videos or to get people to subscribe or to get people to comment below? Have you replied to some comments or added some hearts? Right, you'll notice that that's what I do in pretty much all of my videos, especially to people that reply in the first or comment in the first two hours. By the way, guys, let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway is so far, what you liked from the video. Let me know your thoughts or if there's other related videos that you would like to see, any questions, leave them below. And guess what? The people that make those comments, I will actually reply to these comments, especially the early ones to encourage future comments, more comments. Okay, so that is what you want to be doing at this step over here. And finally, when that is all done, that is when you can move it to complete it. And that is when you know the task is done. And this is how you create a good workflow that gives you optics, that gives you, that streamlines this process that enables you to batch create content, whether it is on YouTube, guess what? This also applies on Facebook, applies on Instagram. Systems and process will set you free. By the way, let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway is. And if you feel that this video has helped you, uh, please smash the like button. It does help out the channel. And be sure to subscribe to this video if you liked it. If not, well, too bad. It does surprise me that you stayed all the way till the end though. Um, you can always unsubscribe. This is Ping Jun here. I hope that this video has given you value and I will see you in future videos. Be sure to watch these other related videos.